you're going to have some brothers who think they're Israelites. <laughs> and lo and behold, it may come out that they're Esau. So we have to be careful. Now, let me show that. Get Matthew the 13th chapter. We're going to round this up. Matthew 13. Right? And we're going to start at the 24th verse. Because while Israel, while Israel was in a sleep state, when they lost their inheritance, I mean they lost, they lost their heritage, excuse me. When they lost their heritage, they, they lost their identity and didn't know that they were Israel. During this period, something, something happened. We're going to show you. Read Matthew 13 and 24, the parable that Jesus Christ gave us, or Yeshua gave us. Read. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So while the enemy slept, what happened? I mean, while, while Israel slept, because that's what this kingdom represents, the Lord tell you the kingdom suffered violence, and the violence take them by force. So why, so why Israel slept? So tears among the wheat and went his way. Read that again. But while men slept, while Israel slept, what happened? His enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. So, the enemy came and sowed seed within Israel. So when wheat and tear are at at a uh, the beginning growth, you can't tell the difference between the two. They look almost identical. But if you're not careful and let the tear grow with the wheat, what will happen? The wheat will come, the, the tear will get on the wheat and choke it and destroy your crops. To let you know that they sold their seed while Israel slept. That's this parable. So while we were in slavery and didn't know who we are, didn't know who we were, Esau came and sold his seed amongst us. And children sprung up. Read. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So you got the tares too. You can, they're almost identical. But they're contrary to each other. Read. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou so get seed in thy field? From whence then had the tares? Go ahead. He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, What wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So a servant or a teacher will be speaking and say, Well, Lord, should I go separate the white man from Israel or the wheat from the tear? Sir, should I go separate them and say, Listen, I can't deal with you? Read that part again. He said unto them, An enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, well, thou then that we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, least while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Because if you gather up the tares, you will end up rooting up your own people. So what did Christ order us to do? Read. Let both grow together. Let them grow together. I see some Israelites be telling people, well, listen, what was your father, father, father? <laughs> what was your mother? But here it is, you don't know who your father, father, father was. So the Lord says, let them grow together. Let them grow together. If you teach the gospel, the spirit going to fall on who it belongs. The spirit going to fall on them, man. You just can't be out there just browbeating people because of what you perceive or who you perceive they are. You can't do that because you're guilty of the blood of Christ. He's going to tell you that. The Lord says, let them grow together. Read. Until the harvest. When is the harvest? When Christ comes. We're not Christ. The harvest is not yet. The harvest is when he will send the angels. So I can't make that decision on the other nations and say, listen, you can't, you can't be a part of this because I don't know who your father, father is. We are not the judge. Read. Read. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. Go ahead. But gather the wheat into my barn. At that time, the Lord is going to gather the wheat into his barn. And also on another fold, this is talking about the righteous and the unrighteous. 
there's a lot of Israelites that are going to be burned along with the, with, with the full-blooded Edomites. And there's going to be a lot of Edomites, believe it or not, that's going to make it into the kingdom to serve because why? They're going to humble themselves and do what the Lord said. They're going to be like Cornelius was. They're going to reverence God's people. They're going to help God's people. But you would know that, a lot of us wouldn't know that because our mind is so focused on hating everybody. When the Lord tell you in Deuteronomy that you're not supposed to abhor an Edomite. Read Deuteronomy 23 and 7. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Read that again. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite. Abhor means hate. Thou shalt not hate an Edomite. We know the Most High hate Esau. <laughs> But guess what? The Most High know who Esau is. Let's go to Amos 9 and 11 to show you something. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. So we're going to be raised up as a people. He's going to close up the breaches. Read. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. It will be built under our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Read. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. So in order for Edom to be possessed. He must live. He must live to be possessed. So the Lord is going to raise up our ruins. So that we can possess the remnant of Edom. What is the remnant? The remnant that's left after the, after the destruction. Some Edomites. A lot of Edomites are going to make it. These are the Edomites that follow Christ. You're going to have some brothers who think they're Israelites. 